because I know on a few of them the directions might be a little difficult since we're doing this remotely. Um, so you have a good amount of the supplies in your kit and so some of the times it might say in the directions to get something um, that you might already have in your kit. So um, I tried to catch some of that um, from previous semesters. So sorry about that if that gets a little confusing. So out of your kit, you're going to need for the first set of experiments, the piece of wool. And I believe everybody's piece of wool is the same color, this kind of a brown green color. You're going to need some of the balloons. You all have different color balloons, so um, just grab a couple of those. And one thing that's not in your kit, you're going to need some sort of um, empty can or empty bottle, a 20 ounce uh, soda or water bottle um, to do this first section. Um, you also will need a sink. I won't be able to show you that part, um, but that one's pretty straightforward when you get to that. So um, to do the first part, you're just going to blow up one of your balloons. So pardon me while I do this. And you don't have to blow up the balloon all the way. Um, that way you don't take the chance of bursting it. You just need it blown up to a pretty decent size. Um, and then you're just gonna do what you've probably done before. You're gonna rub it on, um, something in this case you're going to rub it onto the wool so if you look at um, the table up above this section it shows you what metal uh, materials give up electrons and what materials receive um, electrons um, or freely give them up um, and who takes them or won't give them up easily um, and so you'll see that wool is on one end of that and then um, rubber or uh, latex is going to be in another section of that. So if you rub these two together, what you're going to be doing is you're going to be transferring electrons on one and then you'll be able to do some of your experiments. So one of them is to try to move this can or bottle. Um, it won't work very well on the surface that I'm on because uh, the surface I'm on filming on is felt and felt does the same sort of thing that wool does. But what you're going to do is just bring your balloon that you have um, rubbed on your wool close to the can and the can um, or bottle um, should move um, and you're going to record what happens and see how far you can roll it. So the can or bottle should roll. Um, and if it doesn't, go back to rubbing your wool and balloon together some more to charge them up some more and then try it again. All right, so that is the rolling along the first procedure using your balloon. Uh, the second procedure is um, using the sink. So you're going to do the same sort of thing. You're going to charge up your balloon with your wool and um, you're going to just turn on the faucet just a little bit, get a little stream of running water and then bring the balloon to that stream of running water and see what happens. Um, you could also do this as it shows in the directions. Um, if you have like a plastic cup or a foam cup, you can poke a hole in the bottom of it if you don't mind using the cup and getting rid of it and do the same thing. So it'll cause, uh, create a trickle of water down through the cup and you can bring the balloon towards that bottom uh, cup or sorry, towards the water dripping out of the bottom of the cup um, and do the same sort of thing. Um, that's helpful, especially if you don't have a sink that a balloon will fit inside of. The last uh, procedure using the balloon and the wool is, uh, as you can see there, called Wingardium Leviosa. Now, um, it calls for a... Um, produce bag, uh, but if you don't have a produce bag, which I didn't have, you can also use a plastic shopping bag. So that's what I've got here. 
and whether you have a plastic uh, shopping bag or a produce bag, what you want to do to get the piece that you need is just kind of roll it so that you can cut a circle out of it. So you just want to cut a thin strip out of it so that you get a nice little circle. Right. And then what you'll do with that is you'll do the same thing you did before with your wool and your balloon. So you're going to rub them together. All right. And then once you do that, you're going to take your ring that you made, your plastic ring, and you're going to rub it on the wool as well. Right? And so what you're doing is charging both your ring and your balloon up the same way. And then you're going to bring them towards each other. And you again, my felt keeps um, interfering with it. But you're going to bring them towards each other and see what happens. Okay. So again, you can use a just a regular plastic shopping bag. Most of us have those around. If you don't have a produce bag, um, the plastic is going to be the same lightness and the same sort of plastic. All right, so moving from using the balloons for uh, charging them up with the wool, you can then use that same balloon for the next experiment. So the next experiment is making balloons um, fire resistant. Um, so you can use your balloon that you used for your um, static electricity experiments, the ones with the wool. Um, so you don't need to blow another one up like that. Then you're going to need another balloon. And this sometimes is a little easier to do at a sink. Um, I'm going to give it a try here. I will probably end up pouring water all over the place. I'm going to set my cup here. So you're going to take your other balloon and you're going to add water to it. I can't believe I actually managed to do that um, without spilling it everywhere. So once you've got some water in it and you don't need a lot, um, you just need enough so that you can kind of feel it down in the bottom, then you're going to blow it up. So it's about the same size and you should be able to, if you tilt your balloon, you should be able to see the water. And I don't know if you'll be able to see mine um, on the camera because I picked all of my balloons are dark in color from my kit, but you should be able to see and feel the water in the balloon. Um, once you've got that, then you are ready to go with the experiment on can you make a balloon fire resistant. Um, I'm not going to actually run the experiment. I'm going to let you run it so that you can see what happens. But to finish this experiment, you're going to need two other items out of your kit, and I recommend that you do this outside. Um, because of the noise and the mess. So you're going to need your matches and you're going to need the candle that you have. Um, so one, the noise and the mess. Two, I know some of you might be living in the apartments or the dorms um, and I know that candles aren't necessarily allowed in there. So um, you're going to light your candle um, and be careful with this. Um, you will want to hold 
your balloons by the tails when you do these uh, experiments. So you're going to bring the balloons in once you have it lit and hold the balloon over top of the flame that you've got going on and see what happens. Okay? When you do the one that has the water, make sure that you hold it so that the water is over top of the flame. All right. So those are the balloon experiments. I'm going to take you just quickly on how to set up the sound experiments. So for the sound experiments, you're going to need the straws out of your kit. You're going to need the hex nuts and one of the balloon. Well, actually, you'll need the remaining two balloons. Hopefully, you only needed the two balloons that you had at um, the beginning um, with the... Um, static experiments. Hopefully they did not pop on you. All right. So for the first sound experiment, the musical straws experiment, you're going to need to take one of the straws. We've given you two just in case um, something happens and you're going to flatten the end. So like you, it says in the directions, you can flatten them with your teeth, but I find it's easier to flatten them with a pair of scissors or a spoon or something like that. And then you are going to cut so that you get a nice little pair of points. So if you take a look, you get these nice little points. So that's what's going to vibrate as you blow on them. So then you blow on the other end. Um, it takes a little practice um, to make it make noise. So keep practicing, keep working on it until it makes noise. Um, you may want to do this one outside just because once it starts working, it does make a kind of annoying noise. Um, after you get it working to make the different pitch sounds um, to change the pitch, you're going to cut from the straight end to change it. Um, if you don't, if you like the sound that this one's making, you can always make the other one. Um, you know, cut the other one to make a new one um, so that you can make two different uh, notes. So that's musical straws. For screaming balloons, um, like I said, hopefully you have two of your balloons left and you have two hex nuts, right? So you have a large hex nut and a small hex nut. And uh, this one's pretty straightforward. You're going to slip one hex nut into each one. Thankfully, they fit quite nicely inside of these balloon necks. Um, and then you're just going to blow these up. So, and you want to blow the balloons up to about the same size. And you can, all, you can probably hear that already. Um, and what you want to do, once you want to start doing the actual experiment to make it make noise, you want to grab it like this on top and then start to spin it and it'll start to make the noise, right? Because what you're trying to do is to get the hex nut to start to rotate around on the inside of the balloon and it takes some momentum to get that to go. Um, so you do that with both of them. You want to make sure, like I said, to get both balloons inflated to the same size so you can compare the sounds between the two of them. All right, so that is, that, that's the sound experiments. So up next will be the light experiments.
All right, so the light experiments, there are three. The first one is a refraction experiment. That one's pretty straightforward to set up. You're gonna need a piece of paper, a marker, um, and then something to hold up the paper. So if you can prop it against something or tape it, that's fine. And then you'll need a tall, clear cup or a jar. So um, I've got my tall, clear cup here, and then you'll need some water to pour into it. Um, I'm not gonna show you how that experiment works because I don't want to ruin it. Um, but I do wanna say you can use the same cup that you use for the refraction experiment for the sunset experiment. So the sunset, uh, the sky and sunset jar experiment, you can use the same cup that you use for the refraction experiment. So um, we've got that one. We've got the um, disappearing colors experiment. So I've made my little wheel. It was a little smaller than I intended because um, it should be about the size of a CD, um, but I didn't have anything that to, could trace big enough like that. Um, you can also, uh, you can do it like I did. Mine is done with colored pencils. It doesn't have to be exact, but you want to get all the colors roughly the same size. Um, you can also print this off if you have a color printer. Um, so you can take the graphic that's in your lab and blow it up and print it off and then glue it to this uh, piece of the cardstock or cardboard um, to make your wheel. You have your piece of string in your kit uh, to make the wheel with. So I have already punched the two holes in mine and so what you're going to do is just thread the string through the holes, which I will very inexpertly do right now. There we go. Um, and you're just going to make one of those spin toys. I don't know if any of you have seen any of them, uh, like the bird in the cage or something like that. Um, but that's what we're building here. And so once you get it through, you just knot it on the other side. And so now you've got um, your disc in the middle of the string. So you're going to want to um, wind it by spinning it. So let me move my stuff out of the way here. So you want to spin it just like you would spin a jump rope and then you pull on it to unspin it. Okay. I don't know how well that's going to show up on the camera. So you can see I'm kind of rolling it so that now that there's a bunch of twists, you can see the twists in the uh, string so that when you pull on it, it's going to untwist. Um, and when you pull on it to untwist, you want to be able to see the color uh, side. If um, you want, you can make both sides colored so that it's easier to see both sides. Um, so that way you can observe what happened. Then you can make your own color wheel using your own color combination. So other colors of colored pencils or markers, um, or if you're printing it off, you can make other color combinations on the wheel to see what happens. So that is um, the disappearing colors. Then the last one is the sun, uh, sky and sunset jar. So again, like I said, you can use the uh, same cup. So I've got mine here. You're gonna fill it with water. I've got my cup of water for the sky and sunset jar, and you've got a bag of milk in your uh, kit. This is just powdered milk, so that way you don't have to buy any milk um, if you don't have any. So you're gonna just pour that into your cup, and I'm gonna use one of my straws to mix it up. What we're doing here is adding some particles into the water so that we can observe 
another, come on, another <laughs> property of light. Sorry, the milk is deciding it doesn't want to mix in. All right, so what this allows us to do is observe scattering. And so once you've got it mixed in, then you can take your flashlight and just even your flashlight on your cell phone will work for this. Um, you might find that it works better if you turn off the lights. But what you want to do is take a look at what the light looks like when you shine it through the side. And so look through the cup. Then take a look and see what it looks like when you shine it, for example, down through. Because now you have more um, that you have to look through. All right, so look at it through the different directions because the color of the light should change as you go through the different directions of the cup um, as the light has to travel through more of the cup. Okay, so that is the su uh, sky and sunset jar. If you have any questions, run into any problems running in or running any of these experiments, please let me know and have some fun. Don't forget to record yourself um, doing at least two of these experiments, um, any two of the experiments that you'd like and um, submit those along with the worksheets um, answering all of the questions from all of the experiments. Thanks.